right then, Finn. Seeing as I have no chance of beating you in a skill-based challenge to get first choice of peg. Good old faithful coin flip. Happy Fair with that? enough. Yeah. Okay. Right. Heads I win, tails you lose. Yeah. All right. Heads I win, mate. So I'm going to take that peg if that's all right. Well then, let's get to it. After the success of our trip to Trois Hills, Finn and I decided to head back out to France in search of some huge carp. This time we had our sights firmly set on the Abbey Lakes complex. A short drive from Calais, the complex is home to six beautiful looking lakes. We decided to fish Heron Lake in search of some of the huge carp that reside in there. At 35 acres, it wasn't going to be an easy task, but we were ready for the adventure. So what has happened up until this point? Well, to begin with, after me and Finn got our ticket from the clubhouse, we decided to split around Heron Lake two different directions. So Finn went to the top end, I went the bottom side, and the plan was to just try and find the carp. There is a little bit of a rush because you've got people following you, and you do want to make sure you can find the carp as quick as possible to make sure you can guarantee your swim. In terms of getting a peg at Abbey Lakes, it's, it's almost like a, a busy English venue. The only difference is if you turn up a day early, basically sleep in the car park, then you get given a number, and that's the order that you can check in and then go to your swims. I have to admit, it was a little bit nerve wracking. You always want to secure that, that, that early number so you can get, get the first choice. We ended up with number nine, which isn't too bad at all, considering there's 60 anglers when you spread them out over all of the lakes. Once we signed in, it was then very tense. You know, We were in a hurry to go and have a look. And because I've never been here before, I didn't really have much of an understanding as to good areas, bad areas. I was 100% relying on seeing the carp and then that was gonna tell me that that is a great place to start. After standing in a few pegs and chatting to a few of the anglers who were just on their way out, um, I didn't actually get much confidence or see anything that, that made me wanna stick to that one swim. It was actually Finn when I spoke to him on the phone that said there's two pegs in 17 and 18. He's seen a few fish and that was enough for us to go on. Once I arrived at Abbey Lake and I was in peg 18, it was then time to start getting the gear set up and get the rods out. You're here for a week and the last thing that you want to do is rush setting up, make any silly mistakes. So I took my time and I made sure to find the perfect spot for the session. Now the angler who was in there before me, he'd already packed up and he was back to England. So my next source of information was speaking to Dave the bailiff. He told me about a couple of spots. However, I had fished that swim a few months back and I'd made notes on my phone where these spots were in the swim. I got the leading rod out, done half a dozen casts just to make sure them spots still existed, which they did, so I decided to place my rods on there. I ended up with peg 17, and the reason I chose that out of the two was simply because what I'd seen and the fact that there was a lot more weed present in the bay and I knew that the carp were gonna use it as a holding area and hopefully stay in that area for longer. The weather was pretty rubbish to be fair. We were setting up in and out of the rain, just making sure everything stayed dry because you didn't want the session to be over with before it started with everything soaking wet. So I wasn't in a rush. Um, that was the main thing. I wanted to take my time and get it right. During a break in the rain, um, I managed to get that rod out and I found a big boulder weed in front of me. And just as the weed stopped, um, I found a nice solid area. And to me, that was the golden spot because the carp were gonna be spending their time in that milfoil, feeling nice and safe. And I just wanted to be the first bit of food they come across when they decided to poke their heads out. And the plan worked. I had a bite within the hour. Well, I was just setting the other two rods up. This horrible weather that's coming in now. Fine rain, like the sky is looking dreadful. And I've had a pick up and a drop back. I didn't know whether somebody had just swum through the weed and give me an indication, but no, there is a fish on the end of this for sure. It's bashing its head a little bit, but I'm pretty sure this is a carp. And the rod's been out not even an hour. Like I said, just getting that into position, stealth like the bait boat over it, over the top of the spot where they were fizzing. No leads entering the water and an early bites on the cards. I'm, sorry, I'm nervous. I have to admit, I'm nervous. The fin's on hand. I'm on hand, ready to give you a hand with the netting. He's shaking his head a little bit. I don't think it's not like a big weight. That rod hadn't been out for long. Nah, it's not like a big weight. Use like. Don't lose it, could be 60 pounds. This is when a big old tinge pops up now, and I'm just absolutely out of practice. The big one is known for doing like short little. Oh, you see that one? Yeah, yeah. That was a big one as well. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Anything's big to you, like. Yeah, <laughs> bro. Is it grassy? A long one, like a long... If it's got white tips on its tail by the way, then it is. Get in there, Finn. Go on. That's a great start. That's yes. a good one. <laughs> we'll take that all day long. Yes. Well done. Nice one, mate. 
Bye. That'll do. And we just seen one shot as well. Right. Bye. I'm going to brave this weather, mate. I'm just going to put this rod down, get my raincoat on, and that needs to go back out immediately. The best thing you can do for your confidence on a session like this, getting it right from the off. Uh, and I was made up, to be honest. It, it was a, a small now common, but the perfect start to the week. <laughs> well, the plan worked perfectly. A very stealthy approach to drop a rig on this one's head as I saw fizzing in the swim, and I've made no disturbance. I've seen more fish show, and we were off the mark within an hour, which is a fantastic result. And fingers crossed, things carry on like this, because if they do, we're gonna be in for a very nice week indeed. Fair play to Alfie, he's just been able to catch the first fish of the session. He only put one rod out there, it was in the lake for probably about 20, 30 minutes, it's went off and yeah, he's been able to get off the mark very quickly. So fair play to him, well deserved, especially after rigging the draw. However, the peg next door, which I'm in, I'm also feeling really confident. We've seen a few fish out there. However, the tactics which we've both applied have been slightly different. Alfie has decided to use a bait boat. However, me, I've decided to use the spod rod. Now, to be honest, down here on Heron, not a lot of people spod. I think a lot of people feel like the carp is spooked by it down here. Now, yes, they're probably right, and um, that could be a perfect reason as to why I haven't caught yet, but back in the UK, that's the tactic that I use all the time. It's the thing that I feel most comfortable with. So out here in France, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. Fish comfortable for my own sake. Yes, I might be spooking a few fish this evening, but with the bait that I've put out on the spot, I am confident the carp will turn up. In terms of the spots which I'm fishing out there, I did actually fish this peg just a few months back. So all I done was look on the notes on my phone, got the leaden rod, checked them spots were still there, which they were, and I've decided to put two rods on the spot up against the island, and the third rod, all I've done is use the bay foot and put it in between me and Alfie's swim. Sort of poaching, but good angling on my part. So we're going into the first evening, and who knows, one of them biggins might pay us a visit on the first night. Good in? It's a big mouth, but I don't know. You never really know, I just can't tell because of the wind on the water. It's another common. You said it was going to be about the rod. And, well, I've just redone it, literally redone that rod, and it's gone within, again, 15 minutes. Like, because I had those, obviously, I redid that rod after the first fish, had a few liners. And I was convinced that they just cleared me out of the bait because I didn't have any activity after those liners. Redone it, and what a move that's turned out to be. It's not a bad one. I don't think it is a bad one, is it? Go on, Finn. Yes! Oh, that's, a, that's not too bad, that's that a, one. I think that's a bigger that's one. That's a bigger one, isn't it? Is it a bigger one? I don't know. Oh, she, I don't know, I don't know. Nah, she's a little bit. I get overexcited normally. I'm like, it's a seven years, probably about 10 pounds. You ready? Yeah, go on. How big do you reckon? 42, 43. Good guess. 44. Boy, it's nice when they're 20 above. kilo. Oh, they're getting bigger. 44 pound. A really nice dark common carp. I didn't have a good feeling about that rod that I redone the second time because I had a few strange liners. So I redone it and no more than 20 minutes and this one was on the end, which just shows sometimes you've got to trust your gut because there's a reason why you're feeling like that. And uh, yeah, I'm absolutely chuffed to get off to such a fantastic start. I'm just going to keep repeating that process. It's one rod that's doing the business for me at the moment. Straight back down there now, still a, few, still a few showing on the end of that wind. I think there's more rain during in a second. So let's get the rod back out and hopefully one of those 50 pounders is going to be seeing my landing net.
A bit of a wet night, mate, wasn't it? Just a little bit. Yeah, it's horrible weather. Like wind and rain made it impossible to listen for the um, to any shows or anything like that. Did you hear of any last night? No, I just it's just the wind. It was right into my face, like 20 miles an hour all night of rain and that. So I'm looking forward to actually getting a little bit of break in the weather and being able to have more of a chance to actually see them and hear them. So, so I mean, you've obviously caught a couple. What you're doing is working, but what's going to be your plan today? Dude? I'm a little bit worried about the crayfish. I know they're not too bad, but even some of my by well, the wafter that I had out on, on that slip day got done within like yeah, no. well, I was on for I don't know like two three hours I think I had it out for. Um, and these have been out all night now, so I'm going to reel all those in just to check, and then I'll know for the rest of the week if they're a problem or not. Um, and then just just redo them, I think, mate. Yeah, sure same right. rigs, same bet. Same rigs, yeah. Well, obviously, I had to slip the on one of the rods just because it's a much firmer area. Um, on the other spots, there's a few little strands of weed from what I can tell on the echo. So I'll keep a couple of a couple of Ronnies on the, on the rods or the right hand side of the swim, which has been doing the bites. And then, uh, yeah, a little slip D with a waft on the other one. And then just get back out, a bit of fresh bait, you know, make sure nothing's eating it, nuisance fish, crayfish, and then take it as it comes, mate, the rest of the day. You? Sounds like a good plan. Yeah, I'm just going to repeat the process. I mean, I know I haven't caught anything, but the first couple of days out in France, it's just about building your swim. There's been a lot of disturbance. I know the rigs that I'm using, they've caught me fish in the past. I think it's just redo it, pretty much same amount of bait as I put out yesterday, same hook bait as long as I haven't been created. And yeah, just yeah. go from there. Yeah, sound, mate. Yeah, I'm going to go. Oh, what was that? Was that a tench or was it a grebe? Anyway, I'll let you worry about that. I'm going to go do with us, mate. I'll see you in a no bit. No problem. Catch you in a bit. Being organised at any point in your fishing is in certain situations, it is going to catch you more fish because there'll be a situation where you've got the exact rig for that type of situation tied up, ready to go. And maybe just getting that out there five minutes earlier is going to nick you a quick bite. Before I come on these types of trips, I just make sure I'm super organised. My rig board is full up with different types of rigs depending on, on the different situations I think I'm going to be faced with. It's actually quite surprising how many rigs you will go through in a week, even if you're not having many fish. And that, that just means refreshing the rigs when you reel in the next day. Obviously you want to change the hook baits. And then sometimes a hook point might have ever so slightly been turned over by the crayfish or dinked on a gravel spot. So being prepared is always better uh, than not having everything ready to go. I was a little bit concerned about crayfish activity. I did have a tiny little bit during the day yesterday, but nothing to be concerned about. But generally crayfish are a little bit more of a pest overnight. Um, and I had reason to be concerned because I've just reeled all three rods in and all three are pretty much not fishing at all. They've even whittled down the bait to absolutely nothing or the bait has gone completely. So not too much of a problem to be honest. All I'm doing now is taking my monster shrimp pop-ups, 15 millers, and just wrapping them in a bit of claw cracker. They're definitely not the worst crayfish I've come across. I think they're only small and it's going to take them a while to whittle it down and I'm 99% sure that this claw, claw cracker mesh is going to completely eradicate the problem and leave me sitting here in confidence knowing that my hook baits are out there presented at all points during the day and night because there's no point sat behind rods with no hook baits on now is there so just going to prepare a few of these up and then throughout the week I've only got to grab one that's got the claw cracker on and we're good to go. Seven nights out on the bank is a long time to be out fishing and you want to have a sort of game plan as to what you're going to be doing. Nine times out of 10 when you're coming out to France, you're setting up in a swim, that is base camp for the week. And that week is all about building up the spot and getting the swim established. But when you come into the venues such as Abbey Lakes, where there are opportunities to move around, you've got to come with an open mind that two, three days into the trip, if deep down you've got a gut feeling it's not gonna work in your swim, then up sticks and move. Still stick to the plan as if you're going to be fishing that swim for the week, but don't be afraid to move and find opportunities elsewhere. Something you always have to bear in mind is that it's very likely that someone's just done a full week's fishing in the peg that you're about to jump in. So when it comes to baiting, you don't know how much bait's gone in that swim, where it's gone in. So I think the best thing to do is play it safe and don't start by piling in loads of bait. I treat it just like any venue I would at home and I let the fish tell me how much bait to put in. As long as I'm happy with my spots, my accuracy and my presentation, I'll start with a little bit of bait, maybe like a couple of handfuls. And if I get a bite, then I'll continue to introduce more bait. There is no X amount for Y situation. Every lake's gonna be dependent on the number of fish that are in the lake, the time of year, how hungry they are. So you've just gotta judge it and you just learn the more you go fishing exactly when and how much to put in.
just sat down in Finn swim. We finally started to see a few fish show after no activity today for well, the past 24 hours, really. It's been a little bit horrible to see what we've been being in here to begin with. And then just as that sun started setting, they've started to show, spread out a little bit. Don't get me wrong, they're not held up in one area, but we've seen five, six shows and uh, that same rod has gone again. I've got to pay attention here because he's close in. I've come to the rescue. Nice one, Finn. I can't actually see much without the sun right now. Considering you thought it was a tench. I didn't like think a it was a tench. It looks what? like a pretty big tench. It was stuck, like, because I got to the rod a little bit later than usual. I was like, it's going to have gone into that weed. But he's got weed around his head. That's why he was just coming through slowly. Is he in? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's a nice one. Skills, mate. It's just got to that point of light where I can't see, so I could just see a big ball of weed coming out of the water and then just a calf. Good there. netting, Finn. I've no idea how big that is. Is you all right? Pretty big tench. Oh, yes, number three. Just on dark. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Up she goes. Oh, it's bang on. 29. Go on, Finn. Just over 38. No way. Just Is that over me? 38. Yeah. 30, 30, 30 and a half. 30 and a half. Yes. <laughs> How's that for a tench? I really need to get that out of my head, to be honest. Finn said there's a lot of tension here, and I know he's played by him before. So every time I get one, it's going into the weed. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, it's just a tench, but. It's always good when it's that way around and they're much bigger than what you think you actually have on. 38 pound common, was it 38 Finn? Something like that. 30 yeah, 38 pound common. Really cool looking carp. It doesn't have a dorsal fin, it's got massive barbules, little peck fin as well. Real another nice one of, of Heron Lake. And another confidence boost as well because it's been very quiet the past 24 hours, but they are still in that bay. <laughs> Chuffed again. The night brought one more bite for me. The fight was very calm thanks to a large ball of weed that had surrounded itself around the carp. This one had come on my left hand rod, meaning that I'd now had a bite on both areas that I was fishing. Earlier, I mentioned my baiting tactics and it was clearly working. Start with just enough for a bite and then build the swim with the more fish that I caught. A quick couple of snaps and we sent her on her way. morning of day three and I've woke up with this beautiful view behind me however I'm not going to be waking up with this view again the reason is I'm going to be moving a lot of people might be watching this and thinking but I'm a little bit crazy for moving when you come out to France I think the sort of the theme and the stereotypical idea is you're going to set up in a peg for the week and nine times out of ten that does work but I'm going to hold my hands up I don't think I'm going to be able to get anything going in this swim Alfie next door has been able to catch four fish now is making me look like a right noddy. To be fair, I think he's enjoying the revenge after Troisil last year. Peg 15 is the peg which I'm going to be moving into. I walked around there this morning, placed a bucket in the swim just to claim it while I pack up the gear in this swim. Now the reason I'm going to be moving into this peg is it's directly opposite Alfie, so I can poach his water. And I've been speaking to the bailiff and he said when the sun gets out and it gets quite warm, which is forecast later on this week, the fish do move in there. That swim wasn't available at the start of the week, but someone has moved out of there, so that option wasn't there. But now that I'm faced with it, I'm going to be making the move. I'd much rather be in a bay rather than having my rods out in the deep water. I know so far the trip hasn't been going to plan for myself, but I'm going to keep my head cool. I'm going to move. I'm not going to make any silly mistakes, and I feel like the things that I've learned from this peg, I'm going to be able to apply in the new swim. When you're fishing back in the UK, your average session is 48, 72 hours. It's very rare that you actually go out and fish for a week. When you're bivvied up in the same peg for a week, 
you can sort of have doubt in a way. If you haven't caught after a few days, you might start changing your bait, your rigs, making mistakes, or you might make the decision to move. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. To be honest, it is a personal preference. On this trip, I have been moving around quite a lot. A few people watching this video might think I've just had a massive head loss and to be honest, I might have, but deep down, I felt like when I was in peg 18, after two nights, nothing had happened. People were catching elsewhere and I just knew that I had to move. I could have stayed in 18 and maybe towards the back end of the week, I would have caught, but from past experience, I really didn't think that was going to be the way forward. What bait have I been using on this session then? What I'm gonna do is run you through exactly the components that make up my bait mix and the reasons why I'm using them. To start off the mix, I take some of the Monster Shrimp Flake. And this essentially forms the base of my mix and it actually acts as a bit of a binding ingredient later in the process to make sure everything stays together. Once there's a few liquids that have been added from other ingredients that I'm gonna mention in a sec. And it makes sure that everything cl clogs up and gets down to the bottom rather than dispersing in the wind carrying it down the lake. So after that, I then take some large seed mix, which gives it another element, loads of fine food particles designed to keep the carp in my swim for longer once they do enter. I then complement the large seed mix with good old fashioned sweet corn. Sweet corn for me is one of the best baits of all time. It's in my mix all throughout the year. And I really think it helps just attract the carp in. And they just love it. I've seen them eat it in the margins on underwater footage and they just polish it off every time. So it really makes me feel confident. And then to finish things off, I add some 12 mil monster shrimp boilie. This gives the carp a lot of different size food items down there. And it's also worth mentioning that there are a number of crayfish present. I've noticed as the session has gone on that they have been a little bit of a nuisance. I've combated my hook baits by adding them some claw cracker shrimp wrap. Um, but by adding the 12 millers, I think that if it's been out there all night, it just means that there's more food, food items in the swim for longer, because it's going to take them longer to whittle down a 12 mil boilie than it is to polish off some flake, which is really mouthful size for them already. So uh, loads of different size items to keep the carp in the swim. That's the theory behind it. Now, you've heard me mention Monster Shrimp and how I've been using it in this mix. I'm sure you're wondering exactly what's new to our bait range. Monster Shrimp is a super high quality fish meal that's been in development for over three years as we've looked to source the highest quality ingredients from all over the globe. Now the base of the boilie is comprised with a number of different elements, but to pick out the main ones, we have a number of different fish meals, green lip mussel and crustacean meals, and it's everything carp essentially go crazy for. This lake would certainly have not seen this bait before. It's the first time that it would have been on this venue, and I had that first fish within within an hour of getting the rods out, which I think says a lot for the bait. The bait actually gets its name because of the inclusion of a high-grade shrimp protein from the Far East. Couple that with some famous big carp flavors and a number of different liquid livers, and it leaves you with a very comprehensive and one of the best fish meals on the market. We'll have a full range of monster shrimp, so it's not just going to be the boilie, you're going to have matching flake, pop-ups, gloves, all the liquids, so there's going to be something in the range for all your carp fishing needs. For this session, for instance, all of my fish have fallen to monster shrimp. I've had three on the monster shrimp pop-ups and one on the wafter. So they're certainly working very well. One of the things you don't want to have to worry about is your bait being a variable. As long as you know that you've got a super high quality bait, you don't have to think about anything else other than getting it in the right place. And that's all that I look for when I'm looking for, for what bait that I'm going to use. And this ticks all the boxes for me. It's coming up to that time of the evening again when we start to see the carp show. Pretty much exactly the same as happened as yesterday really quiet throughout the day and then um, in the evenings that's when I'm hoping that the fish are going to move in exactly as they did yesterday just on dark when I managed to have those two bites. Today um, after I woke up this morning about half five six in the morning I didn't see anything it was flat calm I had loads of time to assess the water and see if there's anything about and to, there was just nothing uh, which is a little bit deflating but it sort of suits the pattern that I've been seeing already. So what I did this morning instead of having breakfast in the swim I needed a bit of a freshen up so I went down to the lodge had my breakfast in the lodge, had a nice shower and a shave and just reset to be perfectly honest. Today has really been about getting more of an understanding of the behaviours of the fish across the past few days. They're not in it here in the day. Well, they were on the first day because I nicked a quick bite, but I can say with almost some degree of certainty that they're not spending a lot of time in here in the day. There's no fizzing when I would see it because there's a lot of weed present like I did on the first day. There's no, none showing. So it's all about making sure that I'm in the perfect position for this time of night, six, seven o'clock, when exactly I start seeing them show. So the rods have literally just been redone now, fresh bait, fresh hook baits. I know that the crayfish aren't gonna have bothered me. I know that the nuisance fish aren't gonna have cleared it. Everything is primed. And if they repeat the cycle from what I've been sort of building the picture in my head the past couple of days, then it's game on for another bite. If not, I'll worry about that if it happens.
This is not a sight that has been common on this trip whatsoever. I don't know what time of night it is, but we're playing what is hopefully going to be our first French carp of the trip. The island rod has just had a massive drop back. I've ran out. Yeah, we're playing one. It doesn't feel particularly big, but if we land it, it's gonna show the move has paid off. <sighs> I really hope this one goes in the net. <sighs> Come on, please. <laughs> yeah, she's just down here at the moment. It isn't the um, French 60 that I've been dreaming of, but when you've been struggling for a few days, you make a move and you catch one on the first night. It just fills you with so much confidence for the rest of the trip. Oh, the guy over there, I've just seen his head torch on, so you never know, fish might be on the feed now. Oh, get in. Yes! She might not be big, but she is big to the session as it's our first calf from Heron Lake. It's been a tricky few days for myself, but I've decided to move. I decided to spread the rods all across the swim, not sort of hedge my bets in one area. And it certainly paid off as the rod, which to be honest, I was least confident with, is the one which has produced this. That said, not the biggest, but only way is up. It shows the tactics are working. Let's just hit repeat and hopefully this one's grandma is out there and it wants to have a bit of a feed. Thank you very much. <sighs> and see you later. I'm not going to lie, the past 48 hours have been really frustrating. I sat on there over in peg 17 on Heron, just hoping that the carp were going to come back into that bay like they were on the first two days, and that didn't happen. So this morning, I wasn't going to sit there any longer. Dave the bailiff was up on Kingfisher, he did the night, and he's come around this morning and let me know that he's had a few fish. And let's be honest, we're all here to catch a few fish, and I wasn't going to be camping anymore. So it was time to up sticks and moves, and that's exactly where you find me now, here on Kingfisher. I've got a lot of water in front of me and it, it's a completely different feel to when I was sat over there on Heron. It was really quiet, it's been really quiet and it, like I mentioned, just wait for those carp to come in. We're here, I've got a lot more options and a lot more opportunities, I think, to catch some carp. The peg itself is a big double swim and to be honest with you, Finn has been struggling. I think the best bet is if he comes over and doubles up with me in here because it means we can both start again, new lease of life, new confidence and if Dave has been catching them, I, I see no reason why we can't both get in amongst the action. Fishing is always going to come first. So if you're unable to get two swims next to each other or not a double peg and the fish aren't there and you've got to split up, you've got to do it because that is another number one aim. We want to catch some carp. But when opportunities do arise, big double peg like this one, it would be rude not to have a bit of a social. So I'm hoping Finn's going to come round. We're going to have some lovely food with us, the cameramen all later on, a few drinks. And fingers crossed, there's going to be some carp to show you as well. Obviously, location is the number one factor when it comes to catching carp. And if you're not on them, you're not going to catch them. But you could also be in the right location, but you might have the wrong rigs on, the wrong bait. So before you move, maybe try a few different things. The main thing that I like to do before is try three different hook baits, possibly all of the same rigs with slight variations. And by doing that, you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. By doing this, you might find that a certain colour, such as pink, doing all the bites, and then you'll be able to change the other rods onto that. If you've made a few changes and you're still not catching, it probably is a location thing and the best thing is to move. When I've been moving pegs on this session and going into the other swims, I haven't sort of been changing my mix completely. I haven't been scrapping the rigs that didn't work in the peg previous. These are tactics that work back in the UK, but have worked out here in the past and I've got full confidence that if I land on the fish, they're going to produce the goods. Over when I was on Heron, I used the bait boat simply for the fact that there was already fish in the swim and I didn't want to disturb them. 
In contrast, in this area though, I've got loads of water out in front of me and I always like knowing in the back of my mind what the bottom's like by feeling it through the rod. Obviously the bait boat, you have the stealth approach, but you can't be feeling the lead down and knowing you've got that clear drop and exactly what you're fishing over. So I'm not gonna thrash the swim to a foam. All I'm gonna do is make a few casts, see how deep it is out in front of me, see what bottom I'm working with. I don't know how weedy it is, how deep it is or anything like that. And the fact that I've actually changed to braided mainline as well on my Air Force rod. So I don't have to get a spod rod out. I don't have to have a dedicated leading rod. All I'm doing, Air Force rod, braided mainline, just having a flick around, seeing what the bottom's like. I'll find an area that I'm happy with. And then in my mind, I'm a little bit more confident because I know that I've investigated it with a fishing rod rather than relying on sonar. So let's get that out there. See how deep this is. Okay, we're working with a little bit of depth. I'd say that's probably 15 foot plus and soft. So that was weed, easy to tell. Yeah, straight away. All right, so we'll make a few casts, see if we can find that nice FUD by feeling it down and go from there. Finley. You all right? I'm not too bad, mate. I'm all right now that rods are out, new lease of life, feeling confident. Obviously, Dave had a few last night. Yeah. And you've come to join me. I have. I thought I might as well struggle with company rather than <laughs> being on my own. Yeah, I don't know what it is over on Heron. Like, I have been putting in the effort. I have moved, but just can't really catch them. Like, I think we both know Peg 14, 13, that area, there's a lot of fish. And obviously, the lads in there, they're catching and they're not gonna move out. So it's one of them, it was either stick it out on heaven and try and get one or just move lakes. And like you say, like Dave was in here last night, his caught a few, obviously it's packed up now. It's big double peg and I thought, you know what, I might as well just move over, have a bit of a social and um, yeah, watch you catch them. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good decision, mate. Like, we have got so much water in front of us here. Like to get two of us in there, you could, three rods each and it doesn't even look like we'd scratch the surface of where we could sort of fish in that. So I think we've got a lot of room. We know it's done a few fish. I'm so excited again now. I was like, you know what it's like, yeah. mate. We, we knew that we were going to struggle with what we had in front of us and we try and we did everything we could, but that's the way it goes. I say to the boys as well, it's much better if we, you can catch fish and have a social as well, you know. We're yeah, I, that's a big thing about fishing in France, isn't it? And I suppose the first couple of days we were next door to each other, but yeah, me and Brad, the cameraman, have been a little bit lonely on the other side. So yeah, it's yeah. good that we're all together. Like we say, decent peg. I'm just going to jump. Well, it's pretty much its own peg in itself, isn't it? A big old double peg set up next door and um, see if we can make it happen. I understand, mate. Yeah, get your stuff around. And absolutely, I reckon we're, uh, we'll make it happen. Make it happen. When out in France for a week, the last thing that you want to be doing is being out on the bank and being uncomfortable. You're going to be bringing a lot of terminal tackle, a lot of bags with you, and trying to gramp it in a small bivy, it really isn't for one. So the bivy of choice when I'm out in France is the Titan K1 Camo Pro. This has plenty of space, it's a one-man bivy, but one great feature about this bivy that I like is when you sat on the bed chair, you're able to sit straight up, so you're not going to be getting a bad back throughout the week. This bivy has got an inbuilt inner capsule with the ground sheet sewn in, which is perfect when fishing out in France to keep them insects outside and not within. Starting off by the head end of the bivy, I've got a water box 210. Inside the water box itself, I've got spare main line, spare braid, spuds, spools, basically the things that I'm going to need, but not every day during the session. Next to this, I've got the bedside station. I really like this station as it acts as a bivy table. I can keep my receiver, mobile phone, power banks, power station on there. But also underneath, I've got a shelving unit where I can keep extra things. On the top shelf, I like to keep my tackle box in there. Just makes it nice and easy to grab when I'm wanting to tie a few rigs. As you move underneath the bed chair, I've got a fold flat organizer. In here, I keep everyday essentials. I've got one side for hook baits and gloves, and the other side, I keep my lead bag in there, my hook doctor, and the other things which I'm going to need quite a lot during the session. Towards the bottom of the bed chair, I like to keep my terminal tackle bag. Like I said, to be fair, I've got everything spaced out already on the bedside station and the organizer, so any other random bags get kept in there, and next to that, I have the brew kit. Either side of the bivy, you've got the sewn in mesh pockets. I like to keep things like my keys, wallet, head torches, just so they're nice and easily accessible during the session. 
So that's a little insight on how I like to set up a BV when fishing in France. As you've been able to see, I've got plenty of bags and bits in here, but I've got a lot of space, allowing me to enjoy the session in comfort and style. Now this is a bit of me, mate. I don't know about you. New breath of life, confidence for both of us, and a good bit of food. And food. Oh, this is absolutely handsome, yeah, mate. Yeah, honestly, I feel so... It just feels so new and like, I'm so more confident in this swim. We've seen a couple in the day, which I didn't see any of on having in the day. But down in front of us, which I think is a big thing, I just feel like it's gonna happen. Like, I hope I'm right. I hope I'm not getting like too. No, you, I think you have to remain positive, which you just gotta do. And the fact that we've seen it, and then hopefully this time, we don't, that confidence doesn't fade away. It just stays up high as we just nick a few bites, I think. From what we've seen of them just chilling in the weed at the moment, they look very docile, not doing a lot. I reckon our best bet is when that sun starts dropping. Yeah, I reckon as soon as it cools down a bit, they'll move up that weed. And I mean, two rods I've got out there, the spot that I've found is perfect. I've put probably like five, six dot spots over the top, not a lot. I'm just sort of in a line in front of the weed. And then the other rod I've just took down this margin in. Well, you reckon that's going to be the rod, don't you? Out of my three here. Yeah, and I'm pretty confident in that, so yeah. First night on a new lake. Three more nights left, and the best thing is we can have a bit of a social. Exactly, mate. I'm gonna enjoy this bit of grub, and then hopefully it gets rudely interrupted by pop. Oh. I woke up this morning, beautiful sunrise, but I stayed in bed because nothing happened. I just sort of lay there in bed feeling sorry for myself. Had a drop back. Half expected it to be a bream. Get out of there. Half expected it to be a bream. It's definitely not a bream. Alf was just about to come over, help me net it. Yeah, his rod is ripped off. Here we go, fish down there. Yeah. We can catch calf. We know how to catch calf. And Alfie's got one on. <laughs> I, I was really deflated because it took every... I was just racking my brain. I've been up well before first light, multiple times in the night going, why, why, why? And I, I, I wouldn't have known what to do if we hadn't had these bites. I would have said, well, we're doing something wrong, but... I've been saying that for the last five nights. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's it. At least we've had bites off, like, two different spots, two different parts of the swim. I mean, they've been showing all over this morning, but... Yeah, funny enough, that's the only rod that where they haven't. Really? We're showing, yeah. I say proper showing, like, the odd one. Here she comes. That's not what we're here for, it's but not I'll, what take we're it, for. I'll take it, I'll take it. It's a bite. It's a bite. <laughs> Number five. There she is. A little baby common. Now that is exactly what it's all about, if you ask me, mate. It is indeed. Not the biggest carp in the lake, but I'm not complaining. It shows that what we're doing is working. It's yeah. just, just a case of the bigger ones turning up, if you ask me, mate. Yeah, that's it. When we woke up this morning, for showing up there, and we hadn't caught it from through the night. I was a little bit heartbroken, but yeah, my rod went off, yours went off, your common's immaculate. This is a proper dark mirror. Lovely mirror, that, mate. Lovely. Yeah. Like you said, we can only get bigger, and hopefully this time tomorrow, these will be 50 pounds. Yeah, it? exactly, mate, exactly. <laughs> We were just sat there chilling in the French sunshine, not really doing much until one of the rods on the spot busted off and I was connected into a pretty big carp. As soon as I picked up the rod, this fish just plodded away into the deep water and very quickly found itself in a large weed bed. I applied steady pressure for five, 10 minutes, wasn't really gaining anything. And to more luck than skill, that fish was able to get through the weed and I was connected once again into the carp. He cutted right down the margin on a tight line 
heavy lunges, big bubbles getting kicked up from the bottom. And yeah, my legs were shaking. Again, it found itself in a bit of weed, but this time it wasn't budging. I wasn't gonna risk it pull for a break or hook pull. So I quickly got on the phone to Dave, the bailiff. He brought the boat down here and I got out there to carry on the battle. As soon as I got above the calf, there was sort of mud getting kicked up, bubbles, bits of weed. The fish eventually kicked itself free and I was once again connected. It swam around the boat several times, heavy lunges, big swells getting kicked up. And we've carved it over 70 pounds in here. I was absolutely bricking it. Eventually, the lead has broke the surface and I've just seen the shape of a calf come through and I couldn't believe what I was looking at. Well, I really wasn't expecting that. A bite in the middle of the day on the road which I caught that fish this morning on. Yeah, when I was playing the fish, it weirded me up in a few times. I had to go out in the boat to net it and I thought it was going to be the 70 pounder, which I was dreaming of. But as you can see, it isn't. I've just spoke to the bailiff. I have put a few stockies in here recently, so I'm guessing that's what I'm holding. Fish for the future, it shows the tactics are working, but that's two bites in less than 24 hours. So the move is definitely paid off, and hopefully the next one is maybe about 10 times bigger than this one. This is the rig which I've been using over here on Kingfisher. When I was over on Heaven, I was sort of flitting and changing between a few presentations, but once I moved over here, found the spot which is nice and clean, I knew that I'd be able to use this rig full of confidence. Starting off at the leader end, I've got around three feet of Klingon leader. This just helps keep everything pinned down on the spot and avoid spooking calf which are feeding near the rig. This goes down to a leg clip, and on the leg clip itself, I've got a three ounce lead. There's no need to use a heavy four, five ounce lead. I'm just doing a short chuck around 40 yards and I feel like this lead is the perfect weight for the cast. Moving on to the rig itself, it's my good old trusty blowback rig. I use this a hell of a lot back in the UK. I've got a load of confidence with it. The carp out here in France, for the exact same animals as the ones back home. So all I've decided to change is just lengthen the rig slightly. Normally back in the UK, I use it around seven inches. But out here I've decided to lengthen it by a few inches and the reason for that is and I believe when fishing for big carp and using a long rig it just gives the fish a little bit longer to get hooked rather than picking it up and ejecting the rig. Halfway down the rig I've got a little bit of putty just to keep the presentation again pinned down on the spot. Moving down to the hook I've got a size 4 twister hook. Sometimes I have been using a 2 on this session depending on the weight situation but 9 times out of 10 I've got a size 4. To help the rig turn a little bit quicker, I've got a small piece of shrink tube on the eye of the hook and on the shank of the hook, I've got a little bit of silicon and that's just to hold the hair in place. For hook bait on this rig in particular, I'm using a 12 mil monster shrimp hook bait topped off with a piece of buoyant corn. This matches the mix which I'm spotting out there, so I'm gonna get this rig cast back out and see if we can catch a couple more kingfisher carp. Well, on to Thursday now and it's quite often known as Big Fish Thursday. For whatever reason, it's when the fish, the big ones usually come out and it's a, a day that a lot of people, when they come on these week French fishing holidays that they look forward to. It's just something that's stuck around. I've heard it at loads of, loads of different venues. I haven't got much time left though, if I'm gonna pull it out of the bag. A bit of a frustrating day, if I'm honest. I'm being played by bream that I didn't know were in here. I didn't take them into account when I was creating my bait mix. The thing at the moment is I'm catching them all on the same hook bait, a single piece of artificial maize. So I, I had to do something about that. I went to the opposite end of the scale, 20 mil monster shrimp boilies. I had a bait boat full of those and it didn't take, well, no longer than five minutes for that rod to rip off. And uh, then I was played by a catfish, which Dave did warn me about. Um, I, didn't, I didn't get pestered by them previously, but the boilie only approach doesn't seem to be working either. So I'm now sort of in the middle. I'm using the old bait mix, but this time I'm using larger hook baits. So I'm using snowman rigs now just to try and make sure that the bream don't pick me up. Um, and I can actually try and land one of the big carp that reside in here because it's proving a little bit tricky at the moment. I haven't a clue what time of night it is, but the middle road has just absolutely screamed off from it attached into another car. I had a little problem with the weed on the last couple of fish, so I've decided to put braid on. 
And yeah, touch wood, this fish isn't too far out. We've been able to get it out of the weed. And I'm hoping that it attached into something a little bit bigger than the last few. But a fish is a fish at the end of the day. So if it is another small one, I won't be that bothered. It shows the tactics are working. Yeah, it's somewhere down here at the moment. Just going for a bit of weed. Keep steady pressure. Jobs are good in. And she comes. I've managed to wipe out the other rod, but that is definitely the biggest fish of the trip for me so far. <sighs> Finally a better one. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, she's a 30 pounder. Minimum, I reckon. I don't want to get carried away. That's a proper nice one as well. Oh. Now look at that. A lot of people think French carp are just big ugly things, but this one is certainly not ugly. A proper scaly mirror, just over 30 pounds. My biggest fish of the trip so far. And you have the first nighttime bite on the lake. So it's good for the fish in the area. It's only around half two in the morning now, so we've still got the rest of the night. So I'm gonna flick the rods back out onto the spot. We've got just a little over 24 hours left try and get one of the real big ones. Get in. How exactly have I been catching most of my fish during my session out here at Abbey? Well, let me talk to you about the rig that I've been using. I'm a big fan of the Ronnie rig, mainly for the fact that you can change the hook quickly so you don't have to mess about tying boom sections over and over again. You see that in all of my fishing. Um, I even use the Slip D Multi or the Ronnie rig. But before coming out here to Abbey Lakes, I knew that a lot of the lakes, well, Heron, which we were starting on, was very weedy. And the Ronnie rig lends itself to a situation like that simply because of the slow sinking presentation you can achieve. And as such, you can add that hook bait slowly flutter down on top of any debris that may be on the bottom. Adding to how efficient the Ronnie rig is, um, it's also a really, really effective rig at hooking the carp. The spinning properties of the rig mean that no matter what angle that fish approaches, the rig is able to turn around quickly, flip, and that hook point is able to go straight into that bottom lip where you want it to be. I'm a big fan of using a twister hook, and that is because of the straight point. Um, I used to be a believer in the fact that hook patterns like our claws, they've got a beaked point, so it has to curve in and it, so it has to curve out. So it's, it's more difficult for them to fall off. However, having used this pattern of hook, I, I very rarely lose them, um, touch wood. So I'd much rather have the opportunity to hook them maybe a little bit quicker due to that straight point. And they're so sharp and it's just something I've got absolute confidence in and that's the reason why I use it. Usually using a 20 pound fluoro link as the boom section on my Ronnie, but because the bottom's quite soft here and there are little strands of weeds flitting about, I wanted something a little bit more supple just so it could rest over the contours of the lake bed. The 20 pound semi stiff skin link is my material of choice. And that gives me a nice balance between stiffness to push the hook away from the lead and at the same time, it's not gonna be poking out at any weird angles if there is any bits on the bottom. The boom section is about six to seven inches, which is a nice middle point because you can still get a nice separation, enough rope for the fish to hang himself, come into contact with that lead nice and quickly to set that hook. A little bit of putty in the middle to make sure that's all um, pinned down to the lake bed. A bigger bit of putty, which is just there to counterweight the buoyancy of the pop-up to a Ronnie swivel. Um, and then onto your size four twister, which is just held in place with a bit of one mil shrink tube. I do like using bait screws. Again, I keep coming back to this just because it's efficient, they're easy, you don't have to muck about with floss. Um, but on this instance, there's crayfish present and they are able to pull it off of a, off of a bait screw. So all I'm using is a hook ring swivel, um, pulling bait floss through that, blob in the end, and I'm also protecting the baits as well so those crays can't whittle that bait down overnight. And this has been out for 12 hours in some instances and that claw cracker has done exactly what it should do and has prevented the crayfish from uh, attacking the pop-up. So there you go, the Ronnie rig with a size four twister hook. In this instance, it's caught me most of my fish on this session. The carp, I haven't lost one yet. 
Um, I've hooked catfish, I've hooked bream, so it, it's very effective at hooking all types of fish, some that, some that you don't want as well. But the most important thing is that when a carp picks this up, I'm very confident to know that most of the time that is gonna be in the back of the landing net. It's been a funny old week, hasn't it, mate? Highs, too many lows, if you ask me. A few lows. But at the same time, I've very much enjoyed myself. Have you? Yeah, it's been good. Like I said, it has had its highs and lows, but we have been able to catch a few between us. You heard them biggins at the start. We've moved over here, caught a few. The only thing that we're missing, really, is biggin, but there's still time. There is still time. Yeah, I, I wish things could have carried on exactly as, as they started. I, I think in, in that time period, I, I don't, well, especially from my swim, yeah. Sorry about rigging the draw, by the way, but that was a bit no, of a payback. No, it's all right. It's all right. I'll take it on the chin. <laughs> <laughs> I, d I don't think I could have caught more in that peg um, in that time period. I think I got it spot on. I felt like I angled well, you know, just, yeah. just to get those. No, I'd, those I'd agree. Would you say that was your highlight of the week? Yeah, I, I think so, mate. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it had carried on that way. Yeah. You know? Oh, no, we had the, we had the brace shot. Abby the big Lakes, old brace from King Fisher. The finest <laughs> brace shot that he's ever seen. Um, no, it's, it's good memories, mate, but it would, it's always nice to... I'd rather it the other way around. If I sat here and nothing had happened, I'd rather always start off better than, than end Yeah. Better. I'd rather both. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's... it's yeah. Start good, middle good, and end good. And end good, yeah. And a few things along the way. But that is part and parcel of French fishing, I think. I think when a lot of people come out here, think it's going to be carnage or we're going to catch chunks. And sometimes it does work. Like last year, we caught some proper big carp. This time, we haven't had that big in. But that is part and parcel of fishing. Yeah, and the main thing... I, as long as I don't don't regret anything, you know, I could have I could have stayed in that swim so I can't be bothered to move because we've got to pack up sticks, pack the van, and I, I can say we both looking back have put in maximum effort. You know, if I was yeah. sat here now or I was still sat in the same swim and I hadn't caught anything, I'd be like, oh, I could have moved. Yeah. Then then you start it's not becoming enjoyable anymore. But we grafted, did what we could. Like you say, we still got another night, mate. That's so it. The weather's moving in big calf weather. Yeah. <laughs> that. that Good for the fish. I mean, it's moody. I yeah. mean, it's always <laughs> like we turned up in the rain and we're leaving in some proper no, rain. look what happened at the start when it was raining. You caught some chunks. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just very true, mate. So you never know. 100% um, effort again tonight. Get those rods out spot on and then hopefully, but I've hopefully, said this every night this week. Hopefully. No, um, I'm, fe I'm feeling good about it. I don't know what it is. I've just got like a gut feeling inside. You're going to put it out of the bag. Better late than never, eh? Literally, I've been asleep for an hour or so, maybe a couple of hours, and that right-hander that we uh, made sure was perfect for the final night, it's absolutely melted off. It's always a mad panic running down to the rods. But fortunately enough, found the back of my landing net. 40 pounder, um, I can't actually remember how big it was just weighing it now, but I remember it was over 40, and uh, it's gonna round off my week. Put a big smile on my face after a tricky few days, great start, a little bit of despair in the middle, but I'll be going home with another Abbey Lakes 40 pounder in my photo album. <laughs> well, it's a final night and I've just been rudely awoken. And this time it's the margin rod, which I haven't actually caught anything on this trip except the tench. Yeah, I've just had a funny bite, but it's definitely a car somewhere down in the edge but this could be our last chance to end the trip on a real big end so hopefully that is what we're attached to no nah. that's not small at all come on come on get it <laughs> get it is it in is it in that's a big one that's the biggest one well, it's my biggest one, definitely. Oh, yes! Oh shit, that's a big one. Not too bad. Yes, yes. The margin rod. Huge, mate. Big fish live in the margin. <laughs> How big is it? Have you done it? It's a 50. Yes, it's a 50. She is.
51. 51 too. Yes, dude. <laughs> Talk about last docking weight. Sick work. <gasps> yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. Oh, literally, what? We've got like five hours and we've got to go home. Yeah. <laughs> Great work, mate. Talk about leaving it to the last minute, eh? The final night. We've been able to catch the biggest one. Over 50 pounds, but in the water with it. I really can't believe my luck. It's been a tricky week. Me and Alfie really have put in my effort, but eventually it's came all good, and I'm not going to be forgetting this one in a hurry. What a trip it's been. So let's get it put back, get a few hours kip, and head for home. <laughs>